Hello guys and welcome to today's video and it's a very special one that a lot of people have been asking for and you know what it's about time I've done it so I'm going over the best five pairings for a new player to begin with and I'm going to showcase how you can go from that pairing and work your way up to a better stronger foundation so let's get into today's video Hello guys, yes, smash the like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos of me, Mr. Sneaker. And I'm trying right here today to give you guys the best guide that you keep asking me for questions on how you can work on your account from this pairing to go to the next, right? So that's kind of what this video is. It's going to be a way that I'm going to be able to explain to you guys basically five pairings that you can start with and work your way up to a stronger pairing. I'm going to do this pretty simply. There's no particular order on how you want to do this apart from maybe the very first one. And then afterwards, it will make a little bit more sense when we talk about the DPS ones, right? So the first pairing I actually do want to talk about before we go really in depth is going to be your infantry you need at least guys one infantry pairing and the thing is in the early game what's going to happen is we're going to discuss basically the earliest earliest good combo because honestly you won't be using a hero like bakar here as, as a, a hero but what we can be using as you can imagine is eliana and goward because Eli ellie goward is an amazing combo right so this is going to be your first kind of combo that you're going to run as your pair and if you wonder what pet you would be running you would be running a striped bear with this or alternatively you could run something like a venomous lizard to be aggressive or even the sand lizard for a different way of healing right a bit more area of effect healing right so you can run any of those different pets just to give you um, a little bit of a you know choice right so you're going to start with your eliana and your goward and you're probably wondering how does this work and it's pretty simple eliana just grants you a ton of little shielding on top of this healing with a nice amount of defensive stats and kind of Gala does the same so the amount of troops that you keep healing is what's going to give you basically your tankiness in this march and you can use this march straight away as a merit farming march you can use it to tank the early game behemoths you can use it to actually do quite a lot of content in the game what I would advise if you are wondering is to work on your Eliana as soon as possible as soon as you get her at least five five here you can ignore this peacekeeping skill but if you get a five five you're going to be good as gold you can and then once she's expertise it's it's the best of the best right you would always work for this your eliana is going to be your primary hero until your Garward does get at least to 5111. Because as soon as Garward becomes 5111, you can choose if you want him to be the primary or the secondary because of the different trees. Because you're going to gain the same amount of stats anyway with the Eliana. So it's really good if you want to put him then in the primary slot. Once your Garward is at least, as you can see, like 5 maybe two two or five uh, four two like mine is you will always always put garwood primary right and this is when you will start to realize your infantry lineup has gone from what we've been discussing in this eliana and garwood you know comp and you will actually remove this uh eliana and you will unlock one pairing and this is going to be the go-to pairing that you're going to be rocking most of the time and it's madeline goward you're going to be running this so often because madeline is such a goddamn good hero guys with goward is she not it's the fact that goward and if you're wondering which one to put first i've actually fallen in love with now putting goward primary then madeline secondary because it allows Madeline's shield that she gains, this 1200 shield, to also have this damage taken reduction buff on it for a couple of seconds. So it allows her shield to actually sustain a lot longer than you actually would imagine by layering your skills correctly. 
And this is going to be like your go-to infantry combo. You're going to use this then for the majority of the game, guys. And you can do this combo um, so much justice because you're going to use this as your main behemoth um, tank in the future. You will be using artifacts like the Harlequin's Mask here just to obviously taunt your um, behemoths. In PvP, you could be using anything like the Grey Mars Warhammer, the Dragon Scale Armor, Spirit Bone Talk, even the Fang of Ashikari here if you have it. So there's so many great options with this infantry pairing. And that's kind of like the first go-to pairing that I wanted to talk about and go into because honestly, without an infantry pairing, you're not honestly going to clear content because you'll realize without the infantry content, um infantry the content literally kills your backline like your your range units your mage units all of that dies so i would always try and work out your infantry first and just get a good front line and you can be good as golden when you do have this pairing and and you're wondering what pets to run Again, you can run any of the pets like the Venomous Lizard here or the Sand Lizard with this. And now, because you've got Madeline, in theory, you can also try the Frost Bear. So you can run any of these four pets right now with this pairing and you're good as golden. If you're wondering what skills, again, minimal you can probably use on this, I'll try and get my Madeline to like 5511. And then my uh, Goward can be 5111 and your goodness go. Like, you're going to go, honestly, it's so strong and tanky for a singular infantry match. So, that's the first pairing. We've gone over the Eliana Goward and evolved it now into your Madeline Goward. And that's kind of now, hopefully, now you understand what this whole video is about. So, let's go into the next pairing. So now we've got the other four pairings that we can rock and you're probably wondering, right, what would I suggest? And it is going to be a little bit, obviously, determined on your faction. So depending on your faction, you might choose one of these pairings first over everyone else, right? So one pairing that we're going to discuss straight away is going to be your Craig and, ne uh, and, and Guan Win. This pairing is going to be your archer free to play go to pair from the get go. I don't care who you are in this game because it's going to allow you to have basically the ability to have a archer set up for PvP. And you also are going to have an archer set up, as you can imagine, for PvE content. And we can see this because. Our Craig has a phenomenal um, awakening skill, as you can see, dealing a absurd amount of area of effect damage as an epic hero. He, he easily does the most damage out of any epic hero because of how much damage this singular skill does. It's insane. And on top of this, um, he has a really good, you know, skill allocation. You'll go 5-1-1-1. One, one, one. Then you'll go 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one to get the hero skill damage bonus and map speed for the archers. And then, as you can imagine, you're going to go 5-5-5-1. Five, 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 one because the fourth skill is all engineering. So we don't really care about this until the very end. So we can max out these skills and we're going to be good as golden. And when you look at Guan Win... Gwen wins the same. She's going to be your PvE hero because she has access to that precision talent tree, as you guys know. And as a quick little run in, you know, these um, precision trees is what you're going to be running for behemoth killing. So that's kind of why you run her. So that's like your first go to pair, right? And you're probably wondering, like, artifacts what can i be running honestly if you don't have anything you're gonna have to run rapid crossbow however you are really really quickly gonna get access to bomb flinger if you've chosen the um spring wardens right and you get this as your starting artifact you can level this up in behemoth raids it's gonna do a ton of damage if you're going for pvp it's gonna be the heart piercer but then you will be upgrading all of your um epics into either one of your shadow blades into gold crest 
or into Viola's bow, and finally, a Rattle Spear. So they're going to be like your go-to kind of like artifacts for this pairing when you get them unlocked, right? But you're probably wondering now, okay, so we know what the base is, and, you know, I kind of understood this sneaker, right? What would you run as the pet? So on this occasion, I actually really do like the golden rock on this pet uh, as the pet. It sounds a bit crazy, I know, but I like the rage generation for this. The rage generation from this pet on Craig or Gwanwin is going to allow you to pump out more damage a lot easier and allow you to obviously use that as a, a clear cut you can also if you don't want to run the golden rock i'd actually just recommend using the sand lizard and have your sand lizard set up as a self healing lizard so you only heal yourself to get the maximum healing to sustain out right but as soon as you get into the mid game your archers are honestly going to upgrade and you're gonna get rid of basically one of these heroes in certain scenarios because now we're going to introduce basically nico and canara into the lineups because what we can do here is actually split these two lineups here and run something like this which is a canara craig and a nico guan win combo in the mid game of season one and you're able to do this because you can get as you can see your canara here if we bring up the game you only need a canara honestly guys again at five five one one or even just five one 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 and you're going to be surprised on how well canara is compared to all the other arch commanders in the game it's just because of the raw amount of defensive stats that you gain for her, plus the beautiful 15% damage and adult reduction to the target. She is going to be like your go-to archer, right? So you're going to be using this for quite a while as your like archer parents here. And in this, as you can imagine, you could, if you're more of a spender, drop finally both of your epic heroes and just run a nico canara or canara nico combo it always depends on what you're doing you would run nico if you are doing a behemoth raid for obvious reasons because nico here has got the precision tree and we all know the precision tree is really good if we want to basically kill our behemoths um for our raids if we want Kanara, Kanara's got the best talent trees in the game just to allow her to be the best PvP monster. Do you want her to be offensive, defensive, utility? She has it all, like literally. So that's going to be like your mid game spike. And when we bring down this, you'll notice the pairings now start to um, look pretty easy, right? We start to understand what we're going to be going for in an archer. If you don't want to run this combo and you want to try and make this a little bit easier, I would honestly drop Nico for a bit because we will make a little video on Nico later on to update what I think about him. But you would be just running something like, you say, Kanara, and you could run Craig. Kanara, Craig would be surprisingly a lot of damage if you don't have a good Nico, right? So this is just a nice little alternative for you guys. But if you, we are keeping things as the nice pairings here, what I would recommend in this pairing in particular is always going to be the Snow Peak Rock, right? So you can see if we look at now our two pairings we've gone through from the early phase, mid game, and now to the final stage, we've got this in season one. We're already cooking, right? So then it comes to the next set of pairings. And the ones that you can imagine I'm going to recommend for every single free-to-play player is these next two pairs. I don't care who you are in the game. You can slap me. You can, dis you can disagree with me as much as you want. But you need these two pairs if you're a free-to-play player. Especially if you're a free-to-play player, right? And we're going to rock these two together. And it's going to be... Fear and Atheist, as you can imagine, being the first pairing. And then the second pairing is going to be your Valen and Waldea or Alloin. So we're going to just pull these guys up all together and discuss it. Because 
if you're a free to play player we will always always recommend the mage units because the mage units are going to allow you the easiest access into pvp because they have the greatest range in um call of dragons so if we bring up now some of the the heroes that we're talking about the flying pair is the most easiest and one of the most honestly destructive um meta marches that's constantly being used and that's because you have the ability to use these flying mages like fear and atheist and it's going to allow you to basically harass people and fly over rivers over mountains and they can't follow you unless they're a flying unit too and it's a nasty nasty pvp pork like combo and you will always always run this i'm telling you if you're a free-to-play player and you're playing league of order this is your go-to match it's like your bread and butter that like you learn how to use this match the most effective because later on you're gonna need to upgrade this which we will discuss right but in the other you know as we just um showcase in the other pairings we have Halloween, Waldir and Valen and that is because these are going to be with all due to respect free to play friendly at the moment these are going to be your free mages that you have actual access to and in the early game as you can imagine you might not have a good Valen and Valen in my opinion needs to be 5511 you need him at least 5511 because at 5111 this damage number and these small amount of stats here is not enough to be a awakened wild deer and an awakened Halloween. this match just absolutely stomps guys it's one of the best free to play budget starter mage pairings that you're gonna get it gives a ton of damage because of the nice amount of single target skills but more importantly because of this passive skill that both heroes share they have the exact same passive which is amazing so you get this really powerful combo that eventually you will get a valen around five five one one and once you get him five five one one i will say sadly guys unfortunately you're gonna do the, the the dirty deed to the boy and drop your halloween out of this combo so you will have this very juicy juicy combo here to run from and as you can imagine if you're running this combo now in game you're going to be rocking sapphire phaedrix most likely on both of these um marches however what you could do if you really wanted to keep things nice and simple one for one for everything we could run the brand new shadow phaedrix on our little march here on the single target one it will work beautifully with single target dps because it's going to amplify on that single target all of our single target nukes so you can definitely run as you can see this beautiful combo right here and we're going now into the artifacts because i haven't forgotten about them before we go into the last pairing for you guys but artifacts is pretty simple i honestly believe for the mage players you have access to the tier of armon and the phoenix eye and i'm not gonna lie you're gonna run both of them i run both still to this day and i actually have fallen in love with the tier of armon and it's not even because of the healing factor i wish it had a little bit more healing factor maybe like a thousand or maybe 950 would be a really nice uh, buff to the artifact but it's because of just these sh literally raw stats, guys. I'm reducing damage taken by 5%, and I'm gaining, as you can see here, 62% defense, which is obscenely powerful to make your match very, very tanky in the open field, especially when you're going against T5. You really don't want to take that much counterattack damage. This reduces it 
really really well if you don't have tier of arbon you can be running phoenix eye on this stage right and then if you don't have phoenix eye guess what we have so many other options we can run we've got time bomb which is a really good classic to use as well as even breath of Yagantis, infernal flame and then the newer one if we're going to see if it's going to be worth it but lakeside on the rhapsody which is allowing you to do this really nice you know area of effect and when you enter maybe season t1 the best of the best mirage orb just get it you know just get mirage or put this on if you can get it but it's going to be something you work towards in the future right so there's all the artifacts for your pairings there and let's finally go into the last pairing i'm going to discuss in season one and then you can see below we still got a few more heroes to, to discuss because that is going now into season two and how you guys can prepare from there and go into season two and improve your marchers even better if you want to right so as you can imagine the final pairing we're gonna have to talk about is cavalry we've got everything else covered in the in the lineup but we don't have cavalry and your first go-to cavalry pairing is going to be alistair with emrys i know some people might be shocked and not put bakshi there but honestly emrys in my opinion is a much better hero than um bakshi is in the long term of call of dragons the reason why we say this when we look at this type of hero and your final pairing that you work on is because when we look at the big boy himself the shadow warlord every skill he has is all pvp related he does not waste any subset of stats meaning he's a very good offensive rage accumulating hero that in the future may be a tankier cavalry hero that's better than bakshi and theodore for example could come out and make him excel even better right so that's the plan and that's why people always would recommend um working on your emrys with alistair in the early game right because alistair surprisingly isn't too bad you'll be surprised when he is awakened you're gonna gain this nice 10 percent more normal attack damage but more important the 10 percent less damage this is literally everything again um, reduced so you get a nice little bit of damage reduction from him so i really do enjoy this combo however as you can imagine and, and as we mentioned the main boy you will finally re um, lose alistair in this season and you will run a bakshi emrys combo and you will run this combo as soon as you get a 5 one 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 bakshi and a 5 5 one 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 um um emrys you can try it earlier i run as you can see right now if we just went to my actual you know um, in-game skills you will see that my emrys is five two one two and my back she is five two two three right and you can with even these bad skill allocations it does be my alistair so that just gives you guys how quick alistair will fall out of favor right and when you get to this stage the the obvious choice for me i like solan's blade but you will be getting either one of two uh kingslayer really powerful effect for free to play players to use or the best in slot you can imagine spring blades right so those are like the artifacts for the calves in this little early game pairing that you're going to be using but you will be capturing a berserker fear drake or the golden um the golden rock and the reason why i'm talking about the berserker fear drake already even though we really don't trigger this golden uh this berserker fear drake that much is because we are preparing already to get the cavalry sorted in the next pairing right so this is basically season one now so i hope you guys can see these are the pairings i'm just saying in season one you would be working towards and maybe playing as with a as a free-to-play low spender whale player right 
and I've gone through like the basics and then we've gone up. So let's now upgrade these pairings even further. Let's now showcase how you can now make these five pairings even stronger when you enter your season two plus and finally your season T1, which includes the new heroes Toha and Bertrand. And here we are, boys. So what we're going to do is firstly talk about the infantry lineup, right? I'm going to say in Season 2, you will get access to Goresh and Skullgirl. However, you do not need to invest into these heroes unless you're a spender or a low spender or a big, you know, a big spender generally because of this combination currently is the only combination that works together. You can use Skullgirl if we remove our Goresh with Madeline or Garwood. She actually is, <laughs> funnily enough, pretty okay with both these heroes. So you can use almost this trifecta on the new heroes, right? When you do this, what you would be doing more than likely is upgrading straight away to be using one of these two pets now. You would always be using the Venomous Lizard or the Bruin Bear for your march. And the only time you're using these pets is if you want close range, big damage, go Bruin Bear. If you want low, lower damage but more consistent damage because it hits all ranges guess what we're hitting venomous lizard boys and that is your season two upgrade it's that simple honestly for infantry but more cases than not you will always be running a kind of like stripe bear with goward madeline to you know tank as much damage as you can to gain that vigor right so just keep an eye out this is basically your season two upgrade now for your infantry but now we're getting into the interesting bit because we have archers to talk about and the archer pairing that i'm gonna suggest for a lot of players to to go for is actually to drop nico it sounds a bit crazy i know you might have been working on him but i wouldn't ever choose to invest gold heads into this hero because he's a gold chest one i would drop this hero and if you don't get him it's fine but if you don't get Syndron, it's okay. Because we have Frega. <laughs> uh, it's scary how good in Season 2, Kanara and Frega works beautifully together because basically Frega is a very offensive hero. But when we look at her skills in game, you're going to be, again, um, I would say... Not surprised, but happy to see two um, commanders that work just really, really, really well together, right? So when we look at our Kanara and our even Frega combo here, Kanara is obviously reducing the damage dealt. She's also reducing the hero skill damage taken, which is a very key um, aspect of her because... When you have Frega on top of her, what you're going to do is increase the damage dealt for your units because you're getting this normal attack damage bonus with the critical damage bonus that you get because the chance increase on skill 1. But the more cool thing about this match, which I like because obviously the Kanara lacks damage and the, Kanara, uh, and the Frega gives her damage, the Frega also reduces the enemy rage accumulation speed, meaning even though you're slowing them down with the march speed bonus on it, you are also reducing their march speed by 20%. So that means they get to their um, skill, obviously, one-fifth slower um, or 20% slower. And that's great when you have that with Kanara, right? Because that means they've slowed down to get to that hero skill um, damage. And when they do deal that damage, it's even more reduced because of your hero that you have, right? But if you have a really, really good, you know, chance to um, go it, I would always recommend Kanara Syndrome. This, this match is surprisingly scary good. It's, in my opinion, my favorite archer match. It just allows you to dump out too much damage while hiding behind the tankiness and just the power 
of Kanara with the Syndrome, because Syndrome is all about normal attack damage, which we all know. He is the best at dealing it. He can deal a ton of it. But the problem is you want to kind of hide him, because all of his kit, again, is all damage, straight up damage. So you would go and try and hide him, right? So if we go into now the little pairing screens and we can see where we go in here, you're going to see this little trifecta of heroes. And you're going to notice with this trifecta, Kanara and Frega is going to be a great choice. Kanara, Syndron, again, a fantastic choice. Either way, PvP, you're not going to go wrong with these pairs if you're a low uh, free-to-player or low spender, right? Don't worry if you're a big boy. Just hold out. I've got you covered. You're probably screaming at Lilia and Hosk. I haven't mentioned them. I know we're getting to them, but I need to be fair to everyone else right first. So the, uh, now we've gone over that. This pairing here, honestly, is going to stay pretty much the exact same. The only difference that you're going to gain as a mage player to upgrade your fear and atheist pairing is eventually when you get access to as you can imagine um season t1 and you're gonna get access to bertrand bertrand is the brand new hero the hot stuff on the market right insane single target damage insane era skill damage buff increases insane attack and defense penetration increases and have i not mentioned insane increase in attack and defense bonus stats in a really clever buff for this hero so you will be using bertrand instead of your atheist unfortunately he's just going to outclass him very very quickly in the game but who knows bertrand and atheist might be still a very powerful combo instead of fear but i might my, my thoughts and my head are straight away saying it's just going to straight up replace it for you guys, right? So that is going to be um, that. You will also get, as you can imagine, Toha in this season. But I don't think Toha is going to replace your other match. I don't think Valen and your Waldir will ever be replaced. Because this combo, which we haven't really um, talked about too much, is honestly one of the most ideal combos for a free to play player because with wild deer being almost a soft legendary similar to like craig what we have here is the fact that we have valen has a awakened state right so all the time once you've awakened this valen from your gold keys that you've been opening you will gain a free 400 damage factor whenever we apply a freeze effect. And obviously, Valen can do this freeze effect his own with this icy interdiction. But your wild deer, when he is awakened, also freezes the target, right? So you can in inflict gloom and freeze, which is then going to trigger this beautiful 400 damage factor. So that's kind of why I don't think for a lot of players... Toha isn't going to be one for you. You know, if you're a free to play or low spender, I don't personally think he's going to replace you, right? But in the next pairing, we do have um, our cavalry, right? And the cavalry will get an upgrade because I do believe um, one of the strongest combos um, which you will be using is this trifecta again. Forendil is surprisingly good in uh, um, Cavalry for any player. And the reason why he's so good, and again, I think this is one of the most future-proofed um, commanders out there for Cavalry, is because of the new Cowardice uh, trigger. Cowardice basically slashes your opponent's damage in most cases by 50%. It's insane how much this damage reduction it, it, it does, right? On top of that, you have a nice 1200 damage factor, and then on top of everything else, we have three really powerful skills here that grants us a ton of different stats. Again, which we really, really like, especially when we awaken him and get defense breaks and match speed slows in addition to all of our other skills, right? So Forendale is going to be that guy in Season 2 that you will unlock and you will use. And you can use this beautiful match when we go into our um, tier list 
with either Emrys. So you can do an Emrys, you know, foreign doll march. This will be a very rage heavy build. But what a lot of people like to do is actually foreign nil with your um, Bakshi. And this is a very, very, very tanky build, which is very cool to see. Um, and it does a lot of damage again. But another thing that we can also talk about, which we've got here, is fear. So what you could do is actually fling your foreign deal with your fear and still run your Bakshi Emrys as your pair. So you can see here, we've got a really nice combination. And by doing that, you would be running, as you can imagine, Berserk of um, Phaedric with this foreign deal. And that's why I was talking about we were unlocking it as a option with our cavalry in season one and then here again we'll be using our sapphire phaedric and now our golden rock so you can see it's really easy with our um, pairings and pets what you want to allocate to what heroes and one pairing which we're going to mention now um which is going to be all the honorable mentions now these are the whale pairings if you want to say um We've still got a couple of heroes, right? We've got our Lilia and we've got our Hosk still to talk about, right? These are two VIP heroes that you get access to. And these are only accessible to the spenders, right? So what we're going to do is reset this and showcase you guys some top five pairs, in my opinion, if I had all Awakened Heroes, all of the best stuff, what you could be running now as the end game of your five marches murder ball. So now you've got to this part of the video and you might be a bigger spender. Maybe you're not a big spender. Maybe you're a free to play player and you've stuck all the way around to this side of the video and you want to learn maybe what some of the big players are running, right? So what I'm going to be suggesting here again, five pairs for now, more of the bigger spenders. These are the guys that can max out heroes and we don't have to worry about that kind of you know, steady work rate like we just discussed from season one into the season two and T1 upgrades, right? So I hope that makes sense to you all, right? So if you are a big boy spender, you don't have any issues with anything, right? Your first pairing, no matter what, will be a Madeline Goward build in season one. You're going to use this as your main infantry. You could replace goward with nika this was the og build and the reason why this works so well as you can imagine for a t5 player is because of the madeline has a nice amount of um, defensive stats all the way across when she is awakened increasing that resistance on damage taken by 10 percent but it's because with Nika, Nika, when you have a Awakened, has one of the strongest, honestly, passive skills in the game. And this was originally, and this will be, your Season 1 kind of like go-to garrison pairing. Because when your opponent's rally lead hits 50%, Nika's going to start making this 500 bleed damage um effects happen to them which is amazing on top of obviously reducing their hp by 30 percent on top of again hero skill damage bonuses and counter attack damage bonuses right so really good hero in the early game for you right this is going to be kind of what you're going to run in maybe the open field on if you want to deal a ton of damage but what you can also do um is have husk right husk could be something you run in this area however i think personally there's a better pairing with hosk that you're going to be using for quite a long time um in the game so in season one we'll just rock these two guys and we will be rocking the venomous lizard too in this pairing just to get the optimal amount of car attack damage out from here we're going to go straight into the mage pairing and you are a vip boy you are spending money and you will have access to lilia so you will be running a lilia valen combo in the early game no matter what it's just going to be something you run it does the most amount of area effect damage as we know in the game right so this is kind of what we run for our mage march later on what you can run is uh well you will be running a fear as well as a um atheist match if you're playing league of order or if you're not running league of order and you're playing wilderberg you will be surprised but you can run 
Fear and Craig. If you're a T5 player, you'll be scarily surprised how much damage this does in Season 1. Remember, this is just Season 1 we're talking about right now, right? So, really good amount of um, damage, and you're kind of upping on the fact that this third pairing is always going to be a, a flying unit, right? So, that's kind of what you're going to be rocking here. So, now we go into our Kanara and Nico combo. This is going to be the number one. Number one archer pairing in season one because you have got the disgusting, disgusting awakening combo of both Nico and Kanara, right? Nico states uh, when Nico uh, launches a normal attack on a target and that um, already has a defense break. We have an 80% chance to deal a um, 200 damage factor. Obviously, really good because we defense break them ourselves. But Canara boys, as you guys know, allows you to defense break on normal attacks. So now we have this hero that's going to break your defense with her normal attacks. Now this guy sees that with a normal attack, your defense is broken. And then you're going to deal 200 damage to him. On top of all of the insane stats that these two guys get in Season 1, it's going to be a monstrous combo for you, right? So you will definitely be using this. But maybe you're not lucky. Maybe you don't do Nico, right? Maybe you're the guy that has a little bit more of a brain and doesn't actually invest into Nico knowing what season two is going to do, right? So what you would do, in my opinion, is drop this Nico and run the most hatred mage march in existence, which is Kanara and Hosk. And this match is filthy. Why? Because Kanara has a really powerful skill where we deal physical counterattack damage dealt bonus onto the targets with that match speed slow. But Hosk also states we gain a massive amount of counter-attack crit rate on top of the beautiful fact that we get attack bonus, HP bonus, and a damage dealt bonus. And then if we have our Husk primary, we will gain a 25% defense bonus, boys, on top. And if we don't want to run the overall precision tree, guess what? We can still run our Kanara primary and get that 40% normal attack damage bonus. It's absurd, right? And this combo, you'll be surprised, is something that you will rock in Season 2. And we'll uh, showcase why in a second, right? So that is nice and simple, easy and done with. And your final match, as you guys are going to know, will be your Bakshi Emrys. You will be the guys that run this awakened and do some insane damage to other players right so now we're gonna go into the pets we'll rock our pets as according because we are gonna run for the best of the best um pets i would definitely use the venomous lizard also on this canara hosk march just to give you guys a little uh, showcase there so you can see here these are the ones that we're going to be running um i'll put the little um atheist march here just to simplify it so you know this is your flying pair but now we're going into season two and t1 and t1 and two is the biggest change in shift for a spender because it feels like you guys actually do a lot of evolving in this game right and what i mean by that is to be fair we see madeline nika disappear i'm not gonna lie you might see madeline goward used but what the t5 players have started to rock a lot more is gonna be the goresh schoolgirl combo with the venomous lizard to maximize on the amount of counter-attack damage they deal two t4 players and other t5 players it's just the new go-to route it's like become the new soft core meta this will then if we just get rid of these mage pairings make you run a next pair which is going to be the same kanara and hosk build this double pairing here i think synergizes beautifully because it's so much counter-attack damage that you are dealing and both of these pets i would run venomous lizards on both of them to maximize on it right 
So now let's get rid of these two guys. We're going to keep the cavalry. No, we won't. We'll go completely fresh. We'll go completely fresh, right? Um, now we've got our um, Venomous Lizard and two pairings. What you would be running in this season if you are a T5 player and you have access to every hero in the game is going to be this combination right now. A Syndron Frega with Night, um, Night Owl. It's just absurd again the amount of damage output this march pumps out compared to any other match even for me i'm a t4 player i run a fire free five free frega with a silly five one 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 syndrome and guess what i am still topping rank 10 or higher in dps charts for behemoth raids it does a absurd amount of damage you can see how many kills it's already got for me this season over 9.6 million when we've been using it on top of frega when we look at this match again already over 10.4 million so you can see i've had more merits out of her because i've just been using her with again the canara build but Syndron Frega, the most single target damage in the entire game, it is the most glass cannon build. And I mean that, guys. I don't care what anyone tries to argue. You might get 15% HP bonus here, and you might get that little bit of a defense bonus here with 15%. It is not enough to make this march tanky enough. Especially when everyone sees Syndra and Frega is the number one target. So you will be absolutely melted when you're using this march, right? But the Night Owl is going to make you deal a little bit more damage. It's the pet for you guys. The Night Owl is going to allow you, as you can imagine, to deal more damage whenever you crit. This whole thing is all about critting. It's made for you guys, right? So nice and simple there, right? So we've got three pairings there that we've evolved from Season 1 already into Season 2. So now we've got, again, some different kinds of pairs. And to be honest, you can actually flexibly pick these two different pairings. One pairing that I've actually seen floating about is going to be a Fear with a Lilia. It's actually a new go-to combo people are running. Um, I personally like this too, um, but... I still believe Lilia and Valen with your Sapphire Phaedric here is going to deal the most amount of damage for you. But then we're in the last pairing. And I think if you are a T5 player and you have the choice of sending one cavalry unit, this is where I would use my fear. I would use fear with Forendel with the Berserker Phaedric, and this would be my five pair setup, as you can imagine. Rocking double uh, Venomous Lizard here, and you're good to go because these five pairs do everything you kind of want, and they work really well together, apart from obviously the top pairing. I think the top pairing is a very selfish pair. You know, the ability to um, basically single target blow up people with this fear and foreign doll combo with the Berserk of Phaedric. It is an absolute devastating um, combo. It keeps, funny enough, the um, ranged celestial units in check. So that's kind of why um, I'm always going to be an advocate for it, right? So this is going to be I, I, what I would suggest, the T5 players, if I was a T5 player and I had all of the Awakening states, what I'd be running, these are my pairs, these are what I'd be running in Season 2 and T1 for the time being, until you might get Toha and Bertrand, and that's when things are going to change again. And I think for a T5 player, you're going to run a um, Bertrand with... Um, your fear here and by doing so you will run as you can imagine the shadow phaedric with bertrand and fear all awakened and it's going to be in a filthy match for you guys right so i hope you guys have enjoyed it this has been as you guys have seen a kind of tutorial guide on how you can progress from season one to season two slash t1 with even these brand new heroes that we've mentioned of explained from a free to play perspective the pairs and how you can evolve into a stronger pair and even now just going over the pay to win pairs maybe the best pairs in the game 
for you guys right so i hope you guys enjoyed it this video took a long time to think about and obviously um discuss and work on i hope you've enjoyed it if you have smash like comment and subscribe tell me your thoughts in the comments below and on what you think uh i've done right what things are wrong and until then you know what to do stay safe stay sneaky guys and peace out